Hello and thank you so much for joining me for some bonus crafting. Today I've got a video where I'm creating together with some other uh, YouTubers for a sort of YouTube hop with the crafting together with all brands Facebook group. So I will link down below in the description box all the others that have joined in in this fun little hop and you can go along and click their links and see the projects that they have made. I'll also put the link for the Facebook group down in the description box as well. It's an amazing group to be a part of. There are over 14,000 other members in this group. So I'll pop that link down below for you so you can check it out if you want. For my projects today, we are doing a full stationery set and I've got some extra samples to share with you at the end, but this is a great way to use up wrapping paper, wallpaper, spare bits of um, paper, designer papers you really like. We are gonna turn them into some beautiful little stationery sets. So I've got these books here, I ordered them in bulk. Um, I love grid lines for doing my sort of jotting down my ideas for my craft projects. And I thought they're a bit ugly and a bit boring, so I wanted to jazz it up a bit. And then I thought, why don't I jazz it up and then turn one of them into a gift that I can give someone. So we're gonna do a matching card that goes along with our stationery set as well. Now I've got this six by six paper and it feels very spring-like. So I thought this was perfect for the theme of the video today. And I love this paper. I love um, paper rose papers, they're beautiful. But if you haven't noticed, my papers are six by six and my book is a lot larger. It is, I think, six and a half by about eight um, inches. And so we're going to still use this paper and I'm gonna show you how you can still use the paper and make it all kind of work together. So don't worry about the size of your paper. You can still make it work for whatever project you're working on. So here you can see it doesn't quite fit the front. It's not going to cover that book, but that's okay. We're gonna make it work. Now I tried several different methods of putting um, papers and covering the books, and I found the easiest way was to remove the staples and cover the outside, and then we can put it back together when we're finished. So I'm taking out the inner pages, taking out the staples, and then we're going to cover it up. Now I have this giant roll of wrapping paper. This is recycled paper from Amazon and I get about one of these a year, every year to two years and I just buy this big bulk thing of wrapping paper. So all I did was chop a chunk off and then I'm going to cut down a piece that gives me a nice bit of an edge around my outside cover. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be nice, it just has to give you about an inch to two inches, well two inches is probably too much, about an inch, inch and a half around the whole entire outside of your book. We're gonna then fold it in half so we've got a crease line so we know where we're gonna put our book back on and then that gives us the ability to have a little bit of flexibleness to that kind of bend in our cover. Now I'm using a Scotch ATG gun. You can use glue, liquid glue, if that's what you've got. Be mindful that the liquid glue could warp your paper if your paper is quite thin. But I'm using this ATG gun because I've got it in my stash and it is great for covering books. These books aren't meant to last forever. So I'm not doing a book binding um, little lesson. I'm not doing something that's gonna last for ages. This is something that's gonna last a couple years before the adhesive starts to lift because these adhesives aren't permanent permanent. So they're gonna lift at some point when they dry out. But this is great for a little notebook if you wanna just give your friend a little stationary book to write in or if you wanna jazz up one of your own notebooks in your stash. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, once I've stuck it down, I'm gonna fold up all those sides to give a nice crease around the edge of my paper, and then I'm gonna trim off the corners of my um, excess paper. So I'm just gonna kinda of snip most of that corner off so that when we fold it over, we don't get a big kind of bulky bulge. We're almost wrapping it like you would a gift, so we're just trying to get some nice clean edges. Once I've got those snipped off, I'm gonna fold in the two longer edges, and then I'm gonna fold the smaller, shorter edges over top of those, just so that it looks nice from both sides. And make sure you're creasing that middle as you go to kind of keep that middle bendy, if that makes sense. So tuck in any excess adhesive that's sticking out over the edge, um, and then fold those flaps down, and you've got your cover on your little book. So really quick and simple way. Again, like I said, I'll show you at the end, you can use wallpaper, you can use um, wrapping paper, as long as it's a bit thicker. Um, you can use almost anything that you've got in your office or your craft room, I should say, even in your house. Now I've got uh, a scrap bit of paper here that was left over from trimming that off. So I'm gonna just cut myself a nice little even rectangle. Try and get this as even as you can. I did use a, a knife and um, my ruler to kind of get a nice straight edge but you wanna cut yourself a nice little rectangle. This is gonna be visible on the inside. We're gonna cover up all of our uneven 
mess that we've kind of created and cover it with this nice even piece of paper. So just make sure that you're paying a bit more attention to this little bit here. Again, I pre-creased it so that it would line up nicely in that middle and I'm trying to avoid a bit of adhesive on that middle crease just so that it folds a little bit easier. You can see it kind of pops back open, but that's fine. Once we put it all together, the front will kind of weigh it down a little bit and you could use a little paper clip if you want to hold it in place. Now that we've got the outside cover done, we can go ahead and put our papers back into the book. Now there's multiple ways that you can do this. If you don't have a big stapler like what I've got, you can take a pokey tool and poke some holes through and then you could just add some stitching. There's so many videos on YouTube on how to do book binding, so just have a look and see what's available to you, what works for you. I've got this amazing stapler. It is an industrial stapler. I got it from Amazon. I think it can punch up to or um, staple up to a hundred sheets or something like that. It's, it does heavy duty stapling. So the staples are really big. It's also got the extended bit. I don't need the heavy duty part of it for this book because this book is only, I think, 20 sheets big, but it is nice and deep. So I can do, um, I think up to a four, uh, for stapling. So I've got that and I'm just going to put some staples back in it. It's got the handy dandy little measuring tool on the end there. So I just lined it up and then set the depth of my staples and then restapled them. So now that's all back together and it's a book again but it's beautifully and covered and all in sync and you don't see that blue anymore. I just didn't like the blue, but I love grid line notebooks. I love doodling in them. I love sketching out my ideas. I love that kind of stuff. So next I am going to give my little paper a backing layer. So I, I grabbed some paper from my stash and found a color that kind of went with one of the flowers and I'm going to use that for the backing. So I've saved you watching all this because it's quite a long video already, so I don't want to bore you, but I cut those out to fit on top of my front of my book. And then I've gone and got my scrapbook.com silicone craft mat, and this is great for when you want to do ink blending or adding ink to edges. So I can stick that down on the silicone mat. It kind of holds my paper in place. And then I'm just taking a sponge and adding some dark brown to the edge of my papers. And that kind of I felt like it kind of helped tie it into my notebook a little bit. It kind of distressed those edges and kind of tied brown into the papers, which is obviously what my book now is covered in. These are ancient. You probably can't find them. Any letter dies will do. Or if you have beautiful writing, then you could just write it on the book. You don't have to have dies. But I wanted to cut out the word ideas and just have that on the front of the book. And I did layer them up with, I think I put two layers of white behind. I've only shown one in the video, but I think there's two layers of white cardstock with the layered color on the top. And then again, I distressed those letters and then stuck it all together. So I've attached my two layers for the front of the book, and then I'm gonna go ahead and stick those onto the front of my notebook. Again, quick and easy, just a bit of tape, slapdashed on the back of them. And then I'm gonna use some liquid glue for my letters. So I stuck them together with liquid glue and I'm going to pop those onto the front and I'm just eyeballing it. You could use a ruler and measure it, but I'm not that bothered. So there's the front of my notebook all done and I love how it looks. It's nice and simple. You could go ahead and stick something like a picture on the front of there, or you could put some flowers on there, but I'm gonna keep it simple and leave it as it is. Now to make everything a bit more matchy matchy, I'm going to go ahead and cut myself a piece of one of my pattern papers from the same pack. And I'm going to do the inside of the pen so that the pen also matches and it's a complete stationary set. So I don't know if you've ever done this. This is an oldie but a goodie trick. If you have a pen that you can take apart like this one here, you can stick paper inside it to match it to the set that you've got. Now this bit of paper I'm working with first is too wide and I realized that quite quick that that's not all gonna fit inside that pen. So I grabbed the slightly skinnier version and all you wanna do is kind of loosen up the fibers of your paper. So I'm using a bone folder to just kind of curl that paper to get it to be able to move and curl um, around my pen base. Now I'm just trying to wiggle it into a circle shape and it does take a little bit of manipulation because you don't want to squish it and then end up with creases in it. But eventually I get there with rolling, twisting, rolling, twisting, and then I kind of twisted it, twisted it, twisted it into the pen and then use my pokey tool just to kind of pop the last little bit inside. And then you've got a beautiful pattern papered look to your pen without having to have bought a matching pen. So really quick and easy trick to make some beautiful stationery. And by the time you twist that little cap on, on the end, you can't even tell that that's all you did. So now we've got paper that matches the notebook. 
which I love. And now we're going to create ourselves a little matching post-it note kind of holder to go with it. So I've got these little neon tabs. They had roundy corners on two of the edges, so I just grabbed my corner rounder and rounded the other two edges. And then I'm going to line them up on my desk and measure out how big I want my base to be for it. So I obviously need to account for a little bit of room around the outside so I can show off my papers again. And then I can go ahead and cut my base. So I'm cutting this one, I think it was six by four is what I ended up measuring it out to be. I like to just go with nice round numbers when I'm making my own um, projects like this. So I've gone ahead and cut myself out of some scrap card. I think this was left over from a pack of 12 by 12 paper. I just kept all those little bits of 12 by 12 backing boards for them. Um, you could get some mounting board from a uh, picture framers if you want some extra boards. That's where I used to get it from. Um, you can just pop it and ask if they have any scraps and then usually they give them to you for free. So if you need any boards like this, just pop into your local picture framers and see if you can get some. I've skipped through quite a few steps, but that's just because it's exactly the same as covering our book. We're going to cover our piece of board in the same way and cut ourselves a little panel to go on the back side and just kind of cover up all those edges. So a quick and easy way to cover up a nice little bit of board and create your own little stationary base. Then the next thing we're going to do is cover it just like we did the book. So I've cut myself two little panels that are about an eighth of an inch difference in size to the base. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere those onto the front after I've distressed them. So I'll come in and I'll distress those edges again and then stick them together. Now I overdid it on the distressing on this and you'll see towards the end I'm not happy with the result and I do pull it off. But the um, I wanted to distress the edge, I just kind of got a little heavy handed and then by the time I stick my stationary bits on the top, you can't see that beautiful paper anymore. So to stick the bottom bit on, I use some heavy duty liquid glue and for my top bit, I'm going to use some of this red line tape, which is super duper sticky. And I'm just gonna stick it right behind those little post-it notes. And then that way, when I stick it down, you can't even see that they're there. And really, I only needed one or two, but I went overboard and used four pieces. So it's nice and really, really well stuck on there. So I did have fun ripping that off to replace the paper. So again, you can see it's all starting to match together and tie in together nicely. And now we can create a matching card. So again, off screen, I went ahead and cut myself some layers. I inked up the edges and I'm going to use this new die from scrapbook.com to create a sort of focal element on the front of the card. So I love it. It's like a circle with waves in it. It's quite cool. So I cut myself um, out of several different glitter and foil cards. And I'm going to use this removable adhesive. So it's a, just like a temporary light adhesive just to kind of create my shape on the card. So I'm sticking that down lightly and then gluing in all my pieces into the center of that circle so that they all line up nicely as they should because I didn't trust my own ability to stick them on. And once they're all on, then we can peel off that outer layer or you could leave it on if you liked it, but I felt like it was too close to the edge of my papers and I really wanted it to just sort of have that edge around the circle. Off screen, I made myself the word just, and again, the same as before, I went ahead and die cut two white and then one blue and stuck them together. And then using some low tack tape, this is mint tape from scrapbook.com, I'm just gonna line up those letters, hold them in place and attach them using some liquid glue onto the front of my card. For the rest of my sentiment, I use the Trinity stamps and stamped my words out on a scrap bit of white cardstock. And then I just trimmed them out and stuck them onto the top of my word, um, just, and then now I've got just for you. So that kind of finished off that card. I wanted the envelope to match as well. So I'm going to come in with my corner rounder and round that top corner so that it fits nicely under where the adhesive is. And then just using a pencil, I'm going to mark where sort of the edge of the envelope is so that I can trim off those two edges and trim off that bottom uh, corner of the paper and then that way it slips and slides into my envelope nice and easy. If you want a full tutorial on doing envelopes like this, I have got a video that's devoted to it, so I will try and link that down in the description box for you below. So now I've trimmed off the excess on the sides where I marked it with pencil, I can go ahead and just trim off the excess of the bottom, and now I've got a nice little envelope slip that can pop right inside my envelope and make it look the same as the card, so when the recipient opens it, they'll probably see that pattern paper. So I'm going to slide in the insert into the envelope, uh, line it up with the corners, and then I will just fold the envelope in half. So I've got a nice little crease in that paper on the inside. Then it's just a simple case of gluing the paper to the flap of the envelope. 
So I'm going to fold that down, add some liquid glue to the envelope paper, and then fold my envelope down to meet the paper. And that way, if we're only putting glue, sorry, if we're only putting glue on that top flap, it means that when we open it, the paper can kind of wiggle a little bit on the inside, and we don't need to worry about it being stuck down to that actual envelope because it's stuck to the flap. So there's our card and our envelope all done and ready. And we've got our matchy matchy stationery set all ready to go. And as I mentioned before, I wasn't too happy with this background here. It was too brown. So I did rip it off, you can see here. Um, and it didn't affect the base at all, which is great. I just covered straight back over the top with some fresh paper and I just did a light dusting this time of the edges. And now we can really see that pattern paper through the back of it and it all matches nicely. And my pen is the exact same paper as this little notepad paper. So a cute little stationery set. And as I mentioned before, you can use whatever you've got sort of in your house or in your stash. So this is a set I made as a gift. Um, this is my office before I filled it with all my junk. It was just after they'd finished doing the flooring and wallpaper. But I've got a half a roll left over, so I made myself a notebook. And I love it. I love that I've got a matching notebook that matches my office. And I love this wallpaper so much. So here's the little notebook I made for myself. Um, for jotting down notes and the wallpaper wrapped beautifully. So do remember if you go and get wallpaper samples, you don't need much. So you could potentially cover your book for free. <laughs> um, I didn't encourage that, but yeah, you can go and get wallpaper samples and that would be more than enough to cover a journal as well. And here's another one where I use some papers from my stash. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out the other videos down below in my description box. I hope you have a fabulous week and I'll see you on Saturday. Bye.